All right, guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack. And tonight I'm in here uh, working on a new project. I got a new customer and I'm working on some proofs. Uh, we're still in the, uh, well, we're not really in the negotiating phase. Uh, I'm doing some proofs and I'm just coming up with some pricing. We discussed a ballpark price today. So it looks like we're gonna be a green light on uh, supplying patches for this, uh, this uh, brick and mortar store that's in town. Uh, they do hats, they do t-shirts, they do embroidery, sublimation. I mean, it's a, you know, they, they pretty much do anything having to do with hats, shirts, that type of thing, uh, except for the leather. And they, they were looking at outsourcing that onto the internet because they couldn't find anybody local. But luckily, I went in to get some t-shirts made and uh, for the clack shack so I can quit wearing, you know, miscellaneous shirts. And we kind of got to talking and... So now I got another customer coming up. So I'm gonna uh, share with you, if you've got a 20 watt, a new D D1 20 watt, and you're thinking about doing leather, I'm gonna share with you my settings that I'm using. I also share with you the leather that I'm using. I'm gonna show you what kind of uh, results I'm getting with this 20 watt. I was a little uh, skeptical at first. I thought I might have to break out the 10, but so far I'm getting the same results, if not better, in half the time. So stick around for a minute. All right, guys, just a quick look. This is uh, what I'm working with, and I'm gonna kind of walk you through the process here. A lot of the uh, files that the uh, customer sent me were not uh, in a light burn compatible format. Uh, they were uh, thread files for embroidery machines, and some of them were like uh, Adobe Illustrator files that were in layers, and so I've had to do some working and tweaking to get at the final look that it's gonna look good with a, with a laser because as y'all know, embroidery and laser does not produce the same looks if you use the same file, so. But that's what the wood pieces are. The wood is basically, that was just me uh, using some scrap wood to work out how I wanted the burn to look and then the final phase is to go back and cut them all out in leather. And uh, that's the same leather I've been using for my hats and stuff, so. But I'm gonna get the camera up and uh, We'll continue this conversation. All right, guys, I got one more uh, patch that just completed, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that thing out of here. And uh, when you, as you can see, when it comes out, it's got a little bit of soot on it, but that is why I go straight to the, uh, to the air hose here. And this little wand is, I got about 120 PSI on this thing. And I just use that to get the soot out of the burn and then knock those little pieces out that uh, are in those holes where I put my stitches. It's a lot easier than trying to take a, a toothpick or something and uh, do that. And then once I make sure I got all the holes clean, which a little visual inspection does fine, This is uh, it's kind of what you wind up with. Now, it's still not light as I like them, so I take it over and hit it with a little sandpaper. But let me, let me knock that out right quick. And all I do is just lay it on a flat surface and I use the 400 grit. And of course, after uh, after sanding, it gets hit again with the uh, with the air hose. And like I said, guys, I'm not trying to go for the uh, painted on or printed look. I like for mine to look weathered and look like real real calf skin, so to speak. I mean. Oh, this thing's trying to, it's trying to find my patch. There it goes. Let me move that. But that's what the uh, finished product looks like, guys. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a very deep burn in there. Uh, I like the contrast that I get. The 20 watt does a little bit better job of contrasting, it seems, than the 10 watt did. But uh, anyway, 
that's that and we'll get over here we'll discuss the settings so that uh you know i'm not one of those that doesn't share so i'll share my settings with you guys all right i've got one more that i'm going to go ahead and start while we talk here and i'll let you know what my settings are well i gotta move a magnet hang on i gotta magnet going to be right in the way of my next uh, cut and uh, if you're not using those little flat magnets that come with the back of the, on the back of name tags to hold your leather down uh that's that's what i recommend they're they're kind of low profile they will still hit the cover on the the, the x tool but i have a sneaking suspicion that the cover that came on my x tool eventually is going to end up on the the bandsaw and it's going to end up about a quarter of an inch shorter than what it currently is uh, because I get tired of having to worry about where my magnets are. But let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to line this other one up right quick. I've already got it in. All I've got to do is fire this guy up. I'm going to hit it with a quick frame just to make sure that it is where it's supposed to be. And I based it off of the last one that was burning, so we should be good. And yes, we are. So I'm going to go ahead and start that one. And that'll be my last one of my prototype. Well, no, it won't be. I got one more I got to do for proofs to take to this business to uh, get them to uh, decide if, if, if that's what they want. But uh, the settings that I am running, I'm gonna go ahead and read those off to you. What I've determined with my 20 watt that I like is uh, 125 millimeters per second at 100% and I run that for two passes for the engrave and uh, the uh, the cut I'm running six millimeters per second at 100% output uh, and I'm doing two rotations on that one also so that's that's the settings that I'm using guys and I hope it helps you out and maybe it'll make life a little easier on you instead of messing up a bunch of leather trying to guess this stuff. And I've got to, once I get all these things worked out and get them proofed, I'm gonna come back, see how many I can do on a 12 by 14 sheet of leather. And uh, hopefully I'm gonna start turning them out and that's gonna be one more customer that I'm gonna have. But at least this is a, a, a burn customer and not a build because it's a little less work on me. But, uh, but, Anyway, like I said, guys, I appreciate you stopping by. I just wanted to share that with you and uh, let you know that if you've got the new 20 watt and you were thinking about cutting leather with it, I will drop the, uh, a link to the leather that I'm using in the description so that if you want to buy this particular leather and try it out, if you've never done leather and you want to try to see if you can replicate what I got going here, uh, that'll be the, the leather that I'm ordering. Uh, I will tell you that it seems that the size Availability is going down, so don't be surprised if I go buy a bunch of it tonight before anybody else has a chance to get it. But uh, that's it, guys. I just wanted to drop in and tell you about that and show you the results I'm getting out of the 20 watt because I know a lot of people are worried about, you know, the spot size and precision and all that, but it seems to do a really good job on leather. Uh, it took me a few test burns on some scrap to figure out how I wanted to run it, but now that I've got it figured out, it's, it's doing a great job and. Uh, so far, so good, even with running the air assist. So. But thanks for coming by, guys. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, the bell. Give me a thumbs up, like. Uh, and if you have any questions, go over to Facebook and check out my Facebook page, and you can message me directly from there. Uh, even though YouTube doesn't afford you the opportunity to message on YouTube, I do have a Facebook page, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. So thanks for stopping by, and uh, have a good day.